So what is Conversations with Coriel all about? It's a weekly series on a wide variety of topics, from the metaphysical to the philosophical, from the erotic to the exotic, from the mystical to the spiritual. It's all about showing you how to enhance your life. And I'll also be showing you ways on how you can enhance your animals' lives too. I'll be joined by host Kevin McDonald. I'm happy to have you here. Now let's have a conversation. And let's have a conversation, shall we? <laughs> it must be Tuesday at noon, so that must mean that Coriel Kramer is here with Conversations with Coriel. How are you, my dear? How was your week? Week's been good. Week's been really good. I got uh, the second booster shot uh, on Wednesday. That went fine. No problem. Did everything to make myself comfortable. When I was doing it, sent myself healing, took Claritin afterwards because I heard that they nullify any kind of like after effects of the second shot. Took a 30 minute nap when I got home and it's been fine ever since, but I've been busy, busy, busy because the last two days I've been doing something that I believe is really super important that we're going to be talking about today on the show. But absolutely great. And so what is it that, uh, that, uh, th th there was a, like a burr that got underneath your saddle a couple of days ago um, and you, you decided that you had to do something. What yeah. was the something? So this is something I've been doing, uh, since I was a kid and I really didn't realize why I was doing it until I took the certification course and I learned about the, uh, blueprints. And one of the blueprints is for people and their sexuality and their personality is the energetic, which is the perceptive um, uh, animal version. So what it was, was that it explained a lot of things for me. This is something, like I said, I've been doing since I was a kid. I've been doing it as long as I can remember. And it used to really amuse my mom um and well, because she would she never knew what she was going to get when she came into my room so what i'm talking about is i would get this craving it's it's draw it's like a drive this need kind of like a salmon going upstream it, yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> I don't um, know where that came from. I just I don't, know where came from. I don't know where half the stuff that you come up with comes from, but whatever. <laughs> um, but I would get this drive, this need to rearrange the furniture, move the furniture around completely, totally, uh, rearrange my books, rearrange my things, rearrange the furniture. And um, I always thought I was just, it was just, you know, a quirkiness about me. You know, I just knew that when I was done rearranging the furniture, I liked wherever I was more. I, it felt more comfortable to me. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know the, how often I do this. Um, you know, I used to count it, but I don't count it anymore. So yesterday, two days ago, um, <laughs> maybe it was the COVID shot. I don't know. But I got this need. I looked around at the um, the office space and the living room space, and I was like, no, it's time to change the furniture. Sometimes, sometimes it is, it does correlate very well with like spring, summertime, wintertime. Um, that's usually when I do it um, because I have to rearrange the space to make sure that, you know, the animals are comfortable and the, with the, 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 the heat gets moved through the house right and and things like that there but what i started to realize was that when i changed the space and you want to almost think of it kind of like feng shui but i don't follow the feng shui code or the baguna map or i i just don't it, it's not something that i feels it feels for me for me it feels a little too restrictive i got to keep this area as this area and this area is that I don't like being restricted. That's the story of my life. So there we go. Um, so what I, but what I started to realize, and I wrote a post about this on my website and it's called um, pet problems, try rearranging your furniture. Because what I realized was the last time I did this or when I did this, the ant, my animals started to react better. They started to, um, 
they started to be, become a little bit more calmer. I, I realized, and I, I started seeing that. And um, I also understood that there were times that, you know, I'm able to sleep better when I rearrange the furniture. I feel happier in my home when I rearrange the furniture. Um, and I do it all intuitively. It's just the way that I, I work. But I realized that there is a strong correlation. And one of my most popular posts on my website is called Smudging Your Space. And it shows you how to smudge and what smudging is, how to do it, um, and things you can use, different ways you can, and different techniques that I use. But that's one of my most popular ones. But I realized that smudging your space is important. Absolutely. It's energetically super important, however you do that. But I think rearranging your furniture in your home is just as, if not more important. Now, is that because um that it feels better to you when you rearrange the furniture is it is it is that what it is or is it do you feel like the energy needs to get rerouted somehow both ah. both i think it's both i think as we and we have a tendency to think that you know i, I move in to wherever i'm living and that's it i put the furniture where it is and that's it but it's really super important to look at your your room, your space, whether it's the bedroom, the living room, the office, and just say, it doesn't, and just see and feel into it, feel where the energy feels like it might be stuck, or you need to let in maybe more light, or you need to let in more space so that you can feel like you're, that, that, pathway is 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 clearing out or the maybe changing the color of the walls or or something else like that just think about you don't have to get crazy with the paint and all this kind of stuff i don't paint my house you know i don't i move the furniture um number one because i rent so i can't paint but <laughs> but um it, it's it's just it's putting a plant somewhere that might bring in more living, living energy, um, getting plants in, in your space and putting them in different areas and seeing what it's like and stepping back. That's always an important thing is I'll move something, then I'll step back. How does that feel? Mm, that feels good. That feels good. Okay. So then, then I start making a focal point of that, whatever that furniture is that feels really right. And then I start building out around it. And it's a lot of fun. It really is. I mean, yes, it's also hard work. I mean, I was exhausted by the end of day yesterday. I was talking to my assistant, Karen. When we're, I thought up a, um, an image I was going to use for today's show, and I sent it to her, and she's like, it looks a little scary. Not the one that I have now. I've changed it. But but I was like, okay, that's it. That's all I got. I got no more you know, <laughs> gas left in the tank, okay? I got to go, and I got to take a bath and just chill out and relax. So it can be exhausting, but if you do it in an enthusiastic way and you don't do it like all at once, I broke it up. I broke up the fact that I did the living room first and my living room is connected to my office area. So it's one space. So I did the living room first and I said, Boop, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> then I moved on to the middle part of the living room. And then yesterday I finished up doing this space, which is the office. So I, I love it. I, I It makes me happy. I feel much more calmer. I spoke about this last week about calming down your nervous system. If you're in a space that doesn't feel energetically or just visually nice to you, it messes with your nervous system. Notice how you're breathing in that space, how you're sleeping in that space. Are you sleeping well? I know when I move my furniture, I didn't do it in the bedroom, but I know when I move my furniture or I add things to my furniture or add things to the room, I notice how it makes me feel. And I was sitting in this space now in this doing this show now, I feel not that I didn't feel good before, but it felt like it just felt like all of a sudden, like um, it, it just didn't feel as calm to me this week. It felt very chaotic. So I was like, okay, we need to start changing things around here. And changing, I, I mean, I have this shelf that's above. I have these windows and then I have the shelf. So I added things to the shelf that when I look at it, 
I look at like my, I have a seahorse that's made from um, Indonesian driftwood. So I have that right here um, that I'm looking at right now. And that makes me feel good. I remember when I bought it and and I remember my oh, who I was with and things like that there. So visually, mentally, energetically, uh, spiritually, it all adds up into making you just feel good. And feeling good is like I always say, feeling good is the most important thing you can do to, for yourself and for your animals. Now, some of us have a focal point in like our living room and that focal point um, is a TV. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you do? What if you can't move your TV? Um, do you move everything anyway? Yeah. See, what I have, you, have, I have you can't a, see the TV anymore. That would be a crime. That's not true. It depends on how you're doing. If you always have like the two lazy boys in front of right. the TV, okay, maybe, and they're always wrecked, maybe just moving them just like a little bit. Ah. That opens up that space that makes a funnel as opposed to like the energy going through like the two lazy boys. And I don't have a lazy boy, but whatever. Um, the, the, Think about the the think about the the um pattern or think about the pattern that you're making because that pattern will will help you to understand the movement of the energy. Think of it like a flow. So if you have the two lazy boys like this, but you just make them so that they're like this or like that, so you can see it better. Then what happens is, is that you're you're moving the energy from the TV out, or you're moving the energy from the rest of the room in. So it doesn't have to be a major, major no. change of stuff. It's just changing stuff up just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. You know, I mean, I you don't have to do what I did. You know, I mean, I really rearranged everything, but I made like a separate section right here. Uh, I put a screen in front of it, and that's my meditation area. Okay, because I don't have the, the, and it's close to the fireplace, but I don't have the fireplace on now. I might change this up during the, the winter season. I don't know. Then I have, you know, my chaise lounge over there in the corner and then a little bit. So there's chaise lounges like this. And then the couch is like this a little bit close to it. And then there's another chair in front of it. And then there's the TV. So I've made kind of like a, a viewing area for everyone. And a, a, but a cozy conversation, it invites people to want to go and sit down and have a conversation and talk and nosh a little bit. And, you know, it's it, it's really incredible how if you we have a tendency to just get into a rut. You know, um, and hey, Neely. Um, and rotating the soul pieces. Yes, I took my soul pieces down. I put them someplace else. Uh, you know, art is a great way to do that. You know, uh, Neely has almost all of her animals that she has now, with the exception of maybe a handful, her bulldogs, um, all have a soul piece painted by me. So she has it really cool on the uh, on the wall, different ways on the wall. Um, and the great thing about it is this. If you get those stickers, they have these like Velcro stickers that you can put up uh, paintings with. That's Sammy, by the way, you, you can, you can, you don't have to, you can play around with it. You know, you don't have to get stuck with it by nailing a, a, a nail in the, the wall. You can use these things and see if you can make a collage out of your paintings. Paintings are a great way, uh, a great addition, uh, moving those, bringing in pictures or photographs of, of places that you like and, and things that m remind you of, of happy times. It doesn't necessarily have to be pictures of family unless that makes you happy. A lot of times it don't make everybody happy. So, you know, I, you know, it, it, there's so many different ways of making the space happier. Okay, so here's a really stupid example, but Okay, so I have all my pens, right? I have all my pens, and uh, but I I hate the the usual thing that we keep our pens in. So I found this really cool little teacup that I love, 
and and I like and it makes me happy. I put my pens in it and I like my pens. It's it's weird. I know it sounds weird, but it's little things like that. Just 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 have fun with it. How can I make this more yummy? How can I make this more fun? How can I make this more <sighs> good feeling? And when you feel good, your animals feel good. But also the space, you're going to see your animals are going to react differently. Then it might take them a little bit to get used to it. Um, but but because especially cats, they like their routine. But they also know me. My animals know me. So they know they're like, oh, God, here she goes again. You know, she's moving the cat tree again. You know, but they're OK with it. You know, after a while, they're all right with it. They'll feel better. So when I move my space and I rearrange my space, I see and I look to see how my animals are, are, are acting also. They're, they're guidelines for me. Um, yeah, maybe, you know, they keep out of the chaotic whirlwind that is Coriel, but then after a while they start coming in because they're, they're interested. They're like, Hmm, what's she doing? And, you know, and I could also understand that when I'm feeling good, I'm able to do my job better. So I'm able to even hear my own animals better. I'm able to, to that translates into the work that I do with people and animals. Because if I feel good and I feel good in my space, you're going to feel that. My nervous system is all nice and regulated. So it's 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 really cool. You know, it's, it's really a, an important thing to just look at every once in a while. If you're feeling anxious in your space, if you're feeling like um, overwhelmed in your space, if you're feeling not comfortable in your space, look at your space and see what you can change. Now, do you keep your cat tree looking out a window? I know you move it, but I, you... I have, you know, I, I wish I could show you. I have windows up above here. Okay. So the animals and I see the tops of the trees. So it's kind of like a tree house almost effect. So I don't keep, I used to keep it by the window. The cat never looked out the window. Okay. He never looked out the window because he can go outside. Why oh, I want to go outside. Yes. Normally I would say probably think about your animal and how to better their, their lives. So yes, maybe moving the cat tree or their, or their, their favorite doggy bed by the patio doors so they can look out. But my cats go are in and out. So it's, it's not that big of a deal. So, but what I did was I opened it up so that now if he wants to, but I always think about it, I, I catify my house. So what that means is thinking about your animal or dogifying your house or horsifying your house. If you live with your horse, I don't know. There are some people that might do that. Um, but what I do is, is that I think about my animals when I'm also doing it. So if I move their cat tree, I'm going to make sure that I move their cat tree close to either something that they can, that's entertaining for them. Um, that's, that's nice for them. My cats love the fireplace, but I'm not, of course, going to move it so close that they're going to be in danger of the fireplace. But, you know, it, during the winter time, I might keep it there because they might, they like to be nice and warm and why not be nice and warm in your, in your cat tree. So, or moving it, close to furniture so that they can because cats love to climb so they'll climb up onto the back of the um the chair and then they can get to the cat tree easier as opposed to having to jump up onto the cat tree so you think about your animals just like you're thinking about yourself too well they're your roommates and they're very yeah. important roommates to keep happy yeah because they can like make your life miserable if they don't so I wanted to ask you while I while we're talking about cats because I have always been well when I was young we had cats and then they would just suddenly disappear uh, because there were um, predators in the neighborhood mm -hmm. or or around there. How do you keep your cats safe when you let them outside? See, this is when being an animal communication expert comes in handy. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, it does. So what I do is I've. With the exception of Sammy, who who um, uh, in August of last year went out and never came back, um, so I'm 
but that's the way he wanted to live his life. He's happy. I cannot keep my animals inside. So please don't send me emails saying that I'm putting my animals in danger and all this kind of stuff. Okay. Keep that to yourself. All right. This is the way I make myself happy. I make them happy. So with the exception of Sammy, he was the only cat in my entire life. And I've had been living upstate New York and uh, you know, I've been letting my cats out since I was a kid. He was the only one that's ever gone out, never come back. So what I do is, and you can absolutely try this if you want to. So what I do is wherever I move or periodically, usually once a year, I just re, um, re-energize this communication. I connect to the animal kind energy that's around the house. So bears, coyotes, things like that there. And I, uh, you know, bobcats. Um, and I tell them, I, I make a compromise with them and I tell them you are more than welcome. Okay. To come onto my property. Okay. If you need to, and I show them the property in my mind's eye and I said, but we have to compromise the, and then I show them my animals. I show them a picture of sacred. I show them a picture of Tahu. I show them a picture of Sammy. And I say, these are my animals and the owls and the hawks and the whole thing. And I say, these are my animals. I project this out to animal kind and I say, you are absolutely welcome onto my property. As long as you do not hurt myself or my animals. If you do that, then you can, uh, you are welcome here. I'll, you know, put out like seed and feed you or cow lick or something else like that there. I will absolutely protect you, but this is a protected space. If you honor that, you are more than welcome here. If you don't, then you cannot come through. So then what I do is being the energetic person that I am, I then envision, and I know it sounds crazy, but I mean, I can't, I can't dispute my track record, (laughs) you know? So um, I put uh, whatever I envision an energy, a color energy that protects whether it's purple or whether it's green or whether it's black or whether it's white, it doesn't matter. And I just see it incorporating my entire, the entire land around the house and then going down about 30 feet and then going up about 30 feet. And I set the intention that this, you know, only the animals who will honor my compromise can come through. Nobody else can. Do you remember last year in the summer we were talking and I told you that I don't like spiders in my house and you said, well, we, we can, we can do something about that. And, um, you set the intention that I'll leave them alone if they're outside, but if they're inside, then there's going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did not have any spiders all summer or all fall or all winter. There you go. So don't know how you do that stuff, but it was pretty remarkable. It really was. It's just, it's intention setting. And it's also just talking to these animals, you know, and just letting them know, I respect you as a fellow being, but you come into my house and we're going to have a problem. All bets are off. I tell this to the ants. We got ants all over the place. I don't have any ants. Okay. I lived in New York City, grew up in New York City since I was a kid. Never had cockroaches in my house, in my apartment, ever. Because I talked to them from a very early age. And I said, please do not come into my house. Water bugs, nothing. And in New York, there are cockroaches everywhere. Yeah. I mean, try to do that. And (laughs) try, you know, try to. Try to do that in New York City, you know, and you, everybody else around me had cockroaches. I didn't, I didn't, you know, and it's just, I can't dispute it, whether I can't make, convince you. I'm just saying this is what works for me. You are more than welcome to try it. But um, yeah, it's a, it's really about energy. It's about all of it is about the flow of energy and and being open enough and having an open mind, enough mind to give something a try. You know, we have this tendency. I really do believe, and I don't have any proof of this, but I really do believe there's a correlation. 
I would be interested in finding out if there's a correlation, because I believe there is, between your mental, physical health and what's going on in your home. What, oh, sure. How is the energy in your home? Because if the energy in your home is flowing, then you're going and you're you're going with the flow. But if you're if the energy is stuck and there's a <clears throat> there's a part of you, so start by going to the front door and coming in like you're you're coming in like a guest. You're not attached to anything in that house. So start at the front door and see what feels good. Does that feel good over there? On that, oh, I don't like that over there. I don't go over there. Huh, I don't go over there. Why don't I go over there? Oh, because I don't like that mirror over there or I don't like that painting over there. So start small and just make note of it. You don't have to, you know, go and rearrange everything overnight like I did. It, it's, it starts with just this, mm, okay, where does it, where do I feel comfortable in this room and where do I don't feel comfortable? And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if you don't feel comfortable, wherever that is, nine times out of 10, I will guarantee you, your animals don't go there either. Have you ever walked into somebody's house, a uh, friend when you were a kid, as an example, and uh, you feel the energy vibrations of the house and the people that are in it, and it's negative, you don't want to stay, you want to leave? If that ever happened to you, it happened to me all the time. Oh, yeah, and, and it's not even... <laughs> It's not even as a kid, you know, it's, it's as an adult too. I'm like, oh, God, Lord, Lord. Look, I got to get out of here. Whoops, got to go. I'm late. <laughs> Look at the time. Look at the time. I got no time, no watch, but whoops, it's half past flesh. I got to go. Awesome. So I wanted to ask you because you mentioned it briefly, and I think that it, it uh, there are people that didn't listen to the show um, where we talked about it in depth. But as you move your things around and you move your paintings around and you have something called soul paintings, would you kind of go through that and explain what that is if if folks haven't had the chance to listen to the other podcast? Listen to the other podcast. No, um, <laughs> well, I yeah, don't have much more detail about it. But the the soul piece paintings are commissioned paintings. I don't, you know, I I it, it, they're intuitive commissioned paintings that I do. You can find them on my website. And um, in a nutshell, a soul piece painting is a painting of a uh, being soul. It's a piece of their soul. And just like the uh, uh, a great painting is called a masterpiece, I call my my painting soul pieces because they're a piece of somebody's soul, but also they're they're in and of themselves a masterpiece, but they're a soul piece instead. You do so, people as well as animals. I do people. I do. I started doing people. I used to just do animals, both living and spirit, and now I do uh, people. I do. There's guides. If they want me to do like they have a special guide, they want me to paint their the energy of that guide, their persona. If they have a persona they like, like there's a, a sensual persona or they want to paint their sensual side or they want to paint their sexual side or they want to paint their energetic side. I can do that. So there's different ways and different things I can do it, but it's all done intuitively. So what I mean by that is the colors. I can't if I tell people, do not get a soul piece if you want me to match your living room set. Because it's it's I paint what I see. So I connect to that energy of that being and I paint whatever that I see. So it's all different kinds of colors. I can't match your, you know, your chaise lounge. It's not going to happen. Okay. So, but I will guarantee you the painting will resonate deeply with you because it's on a very deep emotional, uh, spiritual you know, soul level. Um, and so I do everything intuitively. I choose the colors intuitively. I choose the paintbrushes. I do the strokes. I do, um, I smudge the, the canvas beforehand. Everything is done intuitively. When to start, when to stop. And also because of that, I can't force myself to make a soul piece. So what I mean by that is, is that if you need it for a certain time, 
like two weeks from now, it's probably not going to happen. So you need to either get ahead of me ahead of time, or you have to just wait for it. It's, I get inspired to paint. And when I get inspired to paint, that's when I paint. I can't force the soul piece. It would be a hot mess. Trust me. I tried it once and it was awful. It looked like Christmas threw up all over the canvas. It was awful, <laughs> awful, <laughs> awful. Um, so that's what uh, soul piece is. And that's what Neely was talking about is she has several of them of her animals, both living in spirit that I painted over the years. And you've done a, 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 a really nice job with them because they're very, very pretty. Thank you. Um, I, I love them. I'm now happy. there's there's the one that's purple that is of a female uh person um do you remember that one which one? i've used are it you, I've, are you on my site <laughs> <laughs> not not at the moment but i downloaded one of your i downloaded one of your pictures um and it is it looks like somebody's got a hood on and it's a it looks like a female and it's kind of purple and it's kind of like in the rain or or I think that's yours. I I think you might be. Do you can you put it up on the screen or no? I can't. Uh, I didn't set no. it up, so I can't. Do um, it. I think you're talking about the one I did for my. Uh, I think that's the one that's Mark Franken's dog. Um, okay. it, it was like dark on one side, light on the other. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and the soul pieces are cool. You saw somebody with a hood. So the, the soul pieces are really cool because every time you turn it, you essentially in one piece, you get four different pieces because every time you turn a soul piece, you're going to see something different. So that's why I tell people what you should do is get those stickers, those Velcro stickers, because you'll want to move the piece. You can't do that with every piece of art. No, you can't. You know, you've got to keep it the way it is, and that's it. The pieces are in such a way that you can turn it one way. You could turn it horizontally and see something totally different. Then you could turn it upside down and see something totally different and turn it horizontally the other way. So that you're essentially getting four different pieces in one piece. And um, everybody sees stuff differently in it. Uh, that was like, I, and I love it because I step back from it. I'm in it. You know, I'm, I'm painting. I choose the music intuitively, whatever piece is calling, whatever music is calling for that piece, I'll put it on and I'm done. And then I hear you're done. And when I'm done, I'm done. I can't paint anymore. I try to paint and it, it I move the <laughs> brush. It just toward, I move the brush towards the thing and it's like, I can't paint anymore. I'm done. That's it. Got to, the done. other thing, I, the other thing I wanted to talk about that's in your room, um, in your living room, and some people put them in their living room, some in their bedroom. But I want to know how you build a uh, meditation uh, uh, altar or something along those lines, or uh, a meditation space. Yeah. Uh, how do you do that? So it's really simple. You Everything should feel good to you, especially when you make an altar, okay? Because you want to sit there or stand there and you want to feel good. So choose things. First off, choose whatever is going to hold up all of your stuff. So, you know, find a table or if tables don't fit, find shelves or, you know, some kind of of thing that's going to um, make you feel good, like you're honoring whatever is is your that stuff. The stuff is sitting on should be as important as the stuff itself, because that's where your altar is. That's the altar. So whatever it is, it shouldn't be like a um, you know a folding you know card table or something, unless that feels good to you. You know, unless you want to decoupage the hell out of it and paint it and make it feel good. But that's That'll fine. fall Whatever. over. Whatever. I mean, again, um, but so everything is sacred. So you take the thing that feels good to you that you want to you know use as an altar, and then you start finding stuff that feels good to you when you. Well, that represents your spirituality or represents 
uh, being open hearted or compassionate or empathetic or, um, you know, connected to divine, 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 sacred feminine, sacred masculine, doesn't matter. I don't care, you know, and just put it on that altar and but make sure that you take care of it. You know, maybe putting a living plant there, an orchid, something that, you know, moves that energy too. And make sure that you put it in a place that you're going to be, you know, you're going to be using. You don't want to put it in the back, you know, thing of the garage. You want to find a, everything is sacred. That spot that you're making is going to be your sacred altar space. So make sure it's a, put in a space that feels good to you. Or just put stuff all around you that just reminds you of, of spirituality. That's what I don't. I don't necessarily have one space that's sacred. My entire house is pretty much sacred. I got crystals over there. I got Buddhas over here. I got Sammy over here. I got, you know, Kuan Yin hanging on my wall over here that I'm looking at. I've got this stuff up here. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Where do you find that stuff? Where do you find um, I Man, I found, I mean, these are all in my travels, you know, they'll find you. If you set the intention, I want to find stuff that really represents my kick-ass spirituality and set that intention. I'm opening myself up to the things that want to be, you know, representatives of my spirituality. You know, those things will find you. You know, you'll be, you know, I, I the seahorse that I talked about earlier, I found that in a, in a, um, in a store in Gig Harbor, Washington. I was visiting friends there and I saw that and I was like, holy crap, that's awesome. You know, that represents to me my, my connection to water, but it also represents my connection to the divine masculine and feminine because seahorses are very, you know, they're, the men take care of the babies. And so it's a lot of masculine, feminine flow. They also represent the animals to me. So I look at that and I remind myself that I'm an animal communicator and that I'm connected to the animal world whenever I want to be it, um, connected to it. So it's like, it, it depends. I mean, crystals, I mean, now that we have the vaccine for COVID, maybe the psychic fairs will open up, but so, I mean, I was traveling with psychic fairs, so I would get, I knew the crystal dealers and um, they also had, you know, you know, I found this guy. This is one of my favorite pieces. Okay. I found this guy. This one's called the kiss. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. We're, yeah. I love this piece. Uh, this piece is awesome to me. And I found this one in a thrift store in upstate New York. For twenty two dollars, <laughs> you know, a thrift store. I mean, it, it would had crap in it, and there was this thing in a glass cabinet, and I love it, and I see it, and I remember, and I remember finding them, and I just love them. I can just picture husband coming home and seeing that, going, no, 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 no. That's that creeps me out. You're taking that to the the thrift store. And and it was it was there for you because that's where it was supposed to be. There you go. There you go. So it's important, you know, all this is um important to um to making your space sacred and making your space feel good. So maybe, you know, if you got crystals in or tchotchkes in like a glass cabinet, if that makes you feel happy, great. But if they've been in there, maybe you want to take them out. Because that blocks them, that, that's a barrier between you and your, your things. So maybe you want to put stuff in it that, that would reflect that. So I have like a crystal cabinet that I keep all my crystals in. And it was, a, you know, it's probably a medicine cabinet, but I keep it, you know, so that I can have my crystals in there, some of them, so that uh, not the big honking ones, because it's not going to fit. But uh, sometimes I take things out and I move things in or I move them around and rearrange them because the energy gets stuck and you need to flow it. You need to make it flow. You got to help it feel better. You know, and again, like I said, I think moving your things and getting that energy flowing is just as important, if not more so, than smudging your space. 
describe smudging. I wanted to add, I wanted to, because somebody, somebody who's going to listen to this has no earthly idea what you're talking about when you're talking about smudging. So if you go to my website, which is CorealKramer.com, and there's a search button in the upper right hand <clears throat> corner and you put in smudge, which is S M or smudging, which is S M U D G I N G. Then you'll read that post that I did. Okay. But essentially what it is, is that it's taking something. Now it doesn't have to be herbals there. Usually when you smudge, you smudge with an herbal. What I mean by an herbal is something that is a plant based. So it could be Palo Santo wood, which is, you know, comes in little blocks, Palo Santo wood, which is, I think that's Spanish for holy wood. Um, so Palo Santo wood, more than likely, it's usually something like cedar or it's something like um, uh, sage. Ah. Um, okay. So I love you, sage. Yeah. You'll get it in bundles and things like that there. I use a special sage that I discovered when I was doing my humblecha, which is a, a, the Sioux word for uh, vision quest, when I was out in um, South Dakota. And there's sage that just goes in the backyard. There's just sage. So I just picked it. And it's a special kind of sage that the Sioux people use. And they use it in their humblejas, their vision quests. They use it for their sun, um, sun dances. They use it for their nipis. And the the what I love about the sage is usually you'll see a bundle of sage and it's white sage. It's very stiff, right. um, thick leaves. I don't like that smell. It's a little bit too pungent for me. What I use is I use uh, Northern Plain Sage and it comes in these spikes and you can take the leaves off. So you just take the leaves off like that and you can roll it up. It's very soft. The, the leaves are very soft and you can roll it up and then you can burn it. And it's not as strong for, to me. And I get that at something called um, knockbaytrading.com. They have a bundle called the Northern Plains Sage. If you go to the website, my website, there's a link directly to that, um, the bundle that I use. But you can use anything. And you can use, if you want to, you can use like, you know, um, some kind of oil that is uh, clearing for you. This is peppermint oil. So you mm. can put this if you wanted to. You can put this just a few drops in a spray bottle and just spray it around the house. You can use you can use a clearing spritzer, which is what I was talking about last week. So you know, just spritz it around. Okay. Now, the purpose of sage and the purpose of smudging is does it does it send um, give you protection from? from um, bad things in your house or from it clears the energy. I don't really, I don't really like having that energy of protection in my house only because it, it just feels like I'm like, like something's bad trying to get at me. So I don't like bringing that energy in. I just think of it as clearing. I just think of it as clearing. That's it. It's clearing spritzer. That's it. It's got, you know, and it's just an easier way if you don't want to burn sage. Because sage, to the untrained eye and the untrained nose, sage smells like pot. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, kind of. It can. So I tell people, don't, if, you, if you're sensitive to smoke, don't do it. But, or if you want to do it, then just make sure that when you're doing it, you know, you sm smudge the place or smudge the, the room and then open the door or the open the window right away. Smudge the living room, then open the window right away. And then smudge the bathroom or ba 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 You know, and move on. And as you're done smudging, open up a window or door so that you can get that flow and energy right. But that, if you're having problems, usually I tell people, if you're having problems in the house, if your animal is all of a sudden doing something, you know, and they're pooping outside the litter box, I'm not saying this is always the case. I'm not saying that. And I absolutely believe you should make sure that your animal is checked out first by their vet. But 
sometimes when an animal is pooping outside the litter box, they're, they're, the animals are limited in what they can do. They can't write you a post-it note and stick it on the refrigerator. Okay, they don't have thumbs. It's hard for them to pick up the pencil. So they're trying to let you know, hey, for a while, the energy in this house is poopy. Okay, so they're trying to let you know, and they might just say, well, she ain't getting it. So I'm going to poop outside the litter box. Hopefully she'll get somebody who can, can understand what the hell I'm trying to do. But a lot of the times, if you move your furniture, rearrange the house a little bit, smudge your space, then sometimes, sometimes the negative behavior will stop. Now, if they poop in your shoes, does that mean they're angry with you? It could be. It could be. It could be that they're just, they're having a hard time. They could be physically ill. Okay. If they're doing things that are outside the norm, they could be physically ill. They could be mentally ill. They're going through some kind of distress. Um, they could be, you know, having a hard time. It depends on, you know, in the space, if you just moved, I don't know. It could be anything. That's why That's why getting an animal communicator to really and truly find out what the hell is going on is the best course of action. Well, but As there's only, to just guessing. There's only one that I know. Okay. Who's worth getting? <laughs> okay, I, I wasn't getting. setting you up for that. You don't yeah. have to, <laughs> you that, have to <laughs> plug me. Of course I do. Of course I do. If you want, to, by the way, if you want to work with Coriel, you can go to her website, which is Yep. and you can and you can. Uh, uh, there's an intake questionnaire. There's a bunch of stuff there that you can figure out, and and uh, she works with people on an ongoing basis, so it's not a one-off. It's not a 45-minute thing, and everything's going to be cured because it takes a while, and she gets so deep. It's amazing when you get into uh, the dark spaces and the shadow spaces and stuff that you do. Yeah. Um, and you're continuing to learn all of that stuff, aren't you? I am. It's always unfolding. I had, um, I just got uh, a download a few days ago when a woman connected to me uh, on Facebook and she asked me if I could help her son who is going through a rough time. Um, he's got issues. Um, he's five years old. He's got issues. And I just downloaded like a massive program that I think could help him. So uh, I'm going to be contacting her in a little bit, but that's really exciting. It's really, if, if this works, if this works to help him and he feels better and he starts, stops acting out in school, this could be a cure for ADHD, for autism, for for all this kind of mental stuff that kids are going through, and we can get them off drugs. If we can really help them to heal, this is huge, man. <laughs> this is blowing my mind. It's so huge. The potential for this, if this works, could change the world. I'm not exaggerating, but imagine getting kids off. If I could teach these techniques and, and help this kid and help other kids from doing this, this could, this could transform children's lives. I mean, that's, that's where my mind just goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, well, don't, don't get any on the, on the carpet. Okay. Okay. I'll try. No, is, see now when you talk about that and you say you're getting a download and then you say if this works, I think you should change that terminology just a touch. Because oh, if yeah. you're if you're getting a download, it will work. I, I yes, I think so, but I I can't. I've never. This is new, you know, and I just I would love for it to. I feel like it would. I feel in my heart. Like, like I got like this excitement in my heart, like the same excitement I got when I discovered the animal dynamics. I'm like, this could be awesome. This, this is, this could be it. 
you know, so I'm, I'm thrilled about, you know, the potential. Um, yeah, I'm like eager to get this started. And if, if it doesn't work out with her, then at least I have an idea when the next person comes who might be open to it. So well, a five-year-old's pretty much open to pretty much anything, aren't they? Well, his, yes, but his parents might not be. Uh, and that's why I wanted to find out. That's why it was important for me to find out his age because I, I needed to know, because I, I, he's still in the pliable stage, right? He's still open. Um, which is if I was working with a 16 year old, it might've been a little bit more challenging, but this is you know, <laughs> you know. everything having to do with a 16 year old is challenging. Yeah. They're good. people. It, it's, sure. it's pretty amazing. So I, I really would like to know how you work with people that, are, that seem to be close minded to what you do, because it's, it seems to me that if it works and you have people that, that are, you have animals that, that you can prove that the do their behavior changes or what was ailing them changes and people are still close minded how do you how do you work with that can you work with that i don't <laughs> that's easy I, I i to i don't i'm not i'm not um my job is not to prove i can't prove anything i could just do and let's see what happens and then you believe or you don't believe but I'm not going to try to sit there with somebody like this, prove it, prove it, prove it, <laughs> prove it. No, no. You need to go and find your whatever in order to open up your channels. And then once your channels are open up, even the scunch, then come back and see me. Otherwise, bye-bye. Yeah, Hasta la vista, sayonara, ciao, cheers. No, I don't, I don't work with people like that. I don't, I don't, it doesn't make them bad people. It doesn't no. make them bad people. However, I can't, I'm not going to spend my time convincing you. I only work with people who are a hell yes to work with me. Cause I'm a hell yes to work with them. But if you're not a hell yes, then take some time out. Think about whatever's going on. And then when it feels like a hell yes, then contact me again. Otherwise, please don't waste my time. Don't waste your time. It, it's not, it's, it's, it's not something that I want to do. So I don't even vibrate those people. This, this next question I have for you is for all the people who are intuitive out there that are at times filled with self-doubt. Where do you get the confidence to sit there and be able to know that what you're doing is correct? I feel it. I just, it's, I tell people it's like a muscle. When I teach and mentor people in the animal dynamics and, and intuitive uh, awareness and things like that there, I tell them it's like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it becomes. The less you use it, the more it atrophies. So you cannot expect to put in half-assed and get full frontal. It's not going to happen. You can't expect to put in, eh, occasionally I work with a Ouija board and I do a little pendulum and, stuff, and, and get like massive downloads. It's not going to work. It's like the energy. It's like the more you open up the energy, the more the energy can come through. Otherwise, you're getting, you're closing yourself off. So if you're closing yourself off, if you, you can't get anything, you can't get air through this. You can, but it's not going to be as dramatic as this. So if you put in a lot of work, you get it. And then it becomes second nature because you're retraining your brain. You're retraining your brain to put the conscious mind in the back of the bus so that the unconscious and the intuitive mind can come forward. Because what happens is, is that um, if you the, if you do it more, it becomes second nature. I do this on a, on a I don't even know how often, okay? On a, on a second by second, moment to moment basis, I'm connected to my intuition. 
So I'm like, oh, no. you know, I'm getting stuff every set, but that's because I've opened up the pathways. So you can't, if you are just starting out, of course, you're going to have doubts. I mean, I'm getting doubts. I get, into, I get doubts sometimes. I absolutely get doubts. But then I, uh, for a second, and then I, let, let me check with my intuition. No, this feels right. Yeah, this feels right. And you get the logical mind out of it. Because the logical mind is going to try to tell you, you're cuckoo boo. You're absolutely nuts. You're trying to talk to a mouse or a cockroach. Are you out of your mind? You know, I, I, mean, I really think you need to seek mental help and medication. You know, that's the conscious mind. But if you can differentiate between when the conscious mind comes in and the when you're in the flow of the intuitive mind, and you only get that by, by it's like driving a car. <laughs> it's like, this is the gas, this is the brake. This is the gas, this is the brake. This is the gas, this is the brake. So if this is the brake, I feel what it feels like when the brake comes on and the conscious mind comes in. And then I feel when I got the gas, I'm in, I'm in the flow. See, and that's what I love about your work, because that's what you do. There's only one other guy that I know of that, that, that treats it the same way, and that's John Edward. When, he, when, he's, when he's doing a, a, a mediumship reading for somebody mm -hmm. and they say, no, I, I don't think so. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, yes, it is. Yeah. Well, I'm... Listen, I've been doing this for 30 years. Yes, it is. I think you need to go home and find out what it is and uh, and and stuff. And you do the, you do the same thing. Yeah, and that's called actually psychic amnesia. And I tell people, this might not resonate with you right now. It might, you know, you might be doing something a week later. You're driving and your conscious mind is in the back because you're just zooming and you're cool and you're in the flow. And then you're like, holy crap, I remember what she's talking about. I know what she's talking about. I've had so many people tell me that because you're expecting this. You go into a psychic, any kind of intuitive reading. You go into the intuitive reading with, in, with expectations of what you're going to hear. And how you're going to hear it and, uh, you know, what the, the ghost is going to say or whatever and or what the animal is going to say. And I'm like, no, I'm getting this. I've been doing this long enough to know when I'm in the flow and when I'm not. I can't make this up. I'm getting this for a reason. So let's just put this on pause because I don't want to fight you on this. Let's put this on pause. And then you think about it. I have, you know, I have it in my notes if we need to go back. Bah, 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 bah. <clears throat> but the thing of it is, is that they have this expectation of what they, this is what I expect my grandma to say to me and how she's going to say it. And it's like, yeah, but I don't get that all the time. They come to me, usually the spirits come to me and I'll get like some weird shit because they understand that it's like, oh, she's really tapped in. So I'm going to not give her the typical, oh, grandma always wore a yellow sweater tied around her neck and on her shoulders and stuff like I'll get stuff like, you know, and it took me a while. In the beginning, I thought I was crazy and I thought I was getting stuff wrong. And I was second guessing myself and questioning myself and saying, oh, I'm sorry, I guess I got it wrong. And it's like, no, no, no. It's like, I'll get stuff where, you know, I'll see grandma and she's flipping from red hair to brown hair to black hair to red hair to brown hair to black hair. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? And I'll tell the person, I'll say, you know, I, I'm getting your grandma with three different co colored hair. And there's like, oh, she's a hairstylist. <laughs> or or she's, uh, you know, she always used to, to, you know, dye her hair a different color all the time. It was a running family joke. And I'm like, all right, there we go. Because they know that I'm not going to be the typical thing. I'm not looking for the typical stuff. Give me the weird shit. That's <laughs> <laughs> like I like the weird stuff. I, you know, and I, 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 we're we're running out of time, but I've got to. I, I this has been on my mind, and uh, because I, I value your opinion so much, uh, I, I have to tell you this itty bitty little story. I was doing a podcast last week. I'm not. I don't think it was with you. It was with somebody else. I think, and we're talking about movement, about about moving yourself forward and moving into a different direction and moving a, I in a, that was me. 
that if, if it was you, then I got ble- you bled over into me uh, this download because there there's a song that is that the guy who wrote it yeah. um, played it for his friend and his friend and he said to him, oh, don't worry about that. I'm going to change that. And his friend said, no, that's the best line of the song. And and he said, uh, and th- these two gentlemen happened to be Paul McCartney and John Lennon. And the line on the song was, the movement you need is on your shoulder. Mm-hmm. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about that because what that what he didn't realize what that meant was the movement you need is provided to you from your guides that are sitting on your shoulder. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And John got it, and he didn't, and the, and I've been listening to that for years, and had just like that's the weirdest thing I've ever heard. Why would you do that? And and suddenly it made it was like a, a, a light bulb went off in my head, and it was like that makes perfect sense. Is that how it happens for you? Sometimes. I mean, not yeah. just music, but but it's like so whatever didn't make sense five minutes ago suddenly makes perfect sense yeah i mean yeah especially if i'm i'm uh, how do i say especially if i'm if i get like a message for myself and then there's a confirmation that happens yeah like uh okay for example you know you got to be happier you know you really need to let your happy in and then i'll go outside and there's a bluebird bluebird of happiness (laughs) You know, things like that there. It's like, yeah, of course it happens to me. It happens to me all the time. And then I'm like, oh, okay, now I know. Okay, now I get it. All right. I'm They're just forward. reminding you. And and yeah. you're open to it. And so because, and so you're they're reminding you to of, of how you should be and uh, and stuff like that. So yeah. that's 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 really cool. By the way, this is Corey L. Kramer. And go to her website, please. Uh, CorielKramer.com, and you can find out all about her. Oh. And and you work with people not one hour, not two hours. You spend six to eight weeks with people and or their animals, right? And longer. <laughs> and longer. And longer. I take and, it. It takes as long as it takes because we're we're doing massive healing for you. We're showing you how to. Uh, interact with your animals on a much deeper level. We're sh- helping your animals heal if there's needed with that. We're doing all different kinds of yummy, wonderful, amazing, incredible sh- stuff. And as always happens, we started talking about moving your furniture around to change the energy in your house, and we ended up all over the place. So I hope I hope you guys don't mind the uh, randomness of the conversation, but I just get these questions, then that I have to ask them. That's that's how it works yeah that's the way it rolls we roll with the punches <laughs> is there anything else you'd like to tell our audience before we have to wrap it up for today just take it easy and just have fun with it don't feel like it's a chore i have to move the entire room it, it feel like it's you know take a little bit of a time start a little bit and just see how it's flowing and then let that unfold but it's going to be something that, you know, if you do it and you're enjoying it, it's going to just transform the way your home feels to you and your animals. That's it. Thank you very much. That's awesome. I, I'm 63 years old and I've never bought a plant in my house in my life to put in my house. Oh, wow. So I'm, I think I'm going to go buy a plant to put in my house. I think you should. I absolutely think you should. So I, I appreciate you, my friend. By the way, uh, Conversations with Coriel happens every Tuesday at noon Pacific. And so we'd love to have you be part of the broadcast. You can also, as Neely did, you can also um, um, make a comment and I'll stick it up here for it to be there and uh, for Coriel to comment on and stuff so the next time you need to write a comment for Coriel and she can talk to you about some of the stuff that 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 uh is near and dear to your heart that's come above that's come alive for you that uh she can help you with mm. um 
um, unless she does chooses not to. No, I'm kidding. Um, and then just remember, and you see, you've taught me so much during these things. You taught me the movement you need is on your shoulder, and you also taught me that uh, um, because your cat said no regrets on his way out. Uh, just live your life, live your life clean with no, no regrets. And, uh, so that you, you leave it, the, the expression is you leave it all on the field. Leave um, it all on the field. And that's all I got. So thank you. <laughs> Hey, and thanks for listening to this episode all the way to the end. Hey, pretty cool. Hey, don't forget to follow us so you can receive regular updates and new posts. And remember, take care of each other because each other's all we've got. See you next time on My Independence Report.